ladies and gentlemen, Gilbillies and Camel Caps, episode seven. That was that's the new theme song right there. We should like cut that out, yeah. throw it everywhere. Uh, so you know the stuff, the things. Back behind Nick and I, we got uh, Rodney over at Axial to send us out some sweet stuff uh, that is pretty awesome. So that's gonna be behind us. Our banners there. Oh. And we have got the show for you, and we didn't introduce ourselves yet, I don't think, but I am Mix. And I'm Nick. And we are pumped to bring this episode. So how was your Thanksgiving? Did you do much? <laughs> Did hardly anything. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, man. We went up to my grand... well, down to my grandparents in Denver and just hung out there. We do that, like, every year, so... <laughs> That's about all I did. This week's episode is brought to you by Asia Tees Hobbies, and they are dedicated to providing a variety of high-quality and affordable products for our favorite RC brands. That There's like Traxxas, Lossie, uh, all the above, pretty much. Yeah. And they have a focus on time efficiency and great values. Uh, they should be your next destination for all your RC needs. And we might be asking them to send out some small gifts like uh, brass, uh, not brass knuckles, uh, aluminum knuckles or something <laughs> for, uh, my honcho because Nick busted mine and then it's been acting freaky ever since he did that. I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. You took on a diesel. You should oh, not have it. <laughs> I think we've said it like eight times. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I ra- you ran into me. So we're just going to keep going with yeah. that idea there. <laughs> All right. Our first article, uh, here is a video it is really hard to tell what's going on, but it seems that like some dude and his buddy are driving some sort of nitro RC in front of them on a highway, <laughs> and the route uh, that they're on started in like some parking lot somewhere and continued through like three lane highways and bridges, and <laughs> what <laughs> a commenter uh, on the post stated. Uh, This is an accident waiting to happen. They're already impeding traffic, and I'm surprised that they didn't get rear-ended. But they, that commenter went on to say that they had to report to a call where a plane hit a car on the highway, and unfortunately some people lost their lives. Uh, But their car had RC, like, flashing lights on it, which I kind of thought at first when I watched it, because it was in Russian, I didn't understand what was going on. But I thought maybe it was like a police escort or something uh, but obviously it wasn't. And at one point, uh, the cart was traveling 50 kilometers per hour, which is about 30 miles per hour. Uh, back on July 23rd, a long time ago, a drone uh, pilot slash quadcopter pilot, David Lesh from Colorado, located an 82-year-old man named... I heard Guillermo. that one, too. One thing. <laughs> he found a guy named Guillermo de Rerun. <laughs> Hey, it's kind of a rerun. But this one will be so much better than that last one. <laughs> you about that? <laughs> yes, very. I'm very sure. Uh, and this guy uh, was found in a bean field, I think. I forgot where he wrote it. In the middle of Wisconsin, too. So uh, David Lesh decided to help out the search party with his drone. <laughs> and he found this guy after 20 minutes of searching a 200-acre field. So have you ever heard of the Amazon like air delivery thing a thing thing i believe so <laughs> well maybe because you heard this story anyway but uh it doesn't exist quite yet but amazon is hoping that it will soon package uh, come crashing through your living room yeah that's like the best part you know there's no thrill in getting a package no. through snail mail Just until it comes through the ceiling and you're like holy grandma's smokes. walking down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 hey. hey there's your couch your couch is here oh what <laughs> Uh, but with the bans on drones for commercial use, uh, the plans for the Prime Air delivery may be stunned forever. Amazon sent a letter to the FAA on July 19th, and they mentioned stuff about customers being able to receive packages within 30 minutes or less uh, of ordering a thing online. But I don't know what you would need that urgently, That's other than a, a knuckle. That's a couch. <laughs> That, that is a good moving couch. But the catch is uh, the drones can travel over 50 miles per hour. That's not the catch. Uh, but they can carry packages up to five pounds. So it must oh. be a small kid's couch. <laughs> but uh, package up, packages up to five pounds are like 86% of all packages that they sell. Hmm. And they're on 8th and ninth generation, generation whoa, drones uh, already. But they have been testing them inside. 
So that's so they the don't mess. account for wind. I, it's going to mess everything up. Because I, I wonder, I didn't really read, but are they, I imagine they'd be, like, automated completely. Like, you Google Maps, mm-hmm. and then it's like, let's go deliver it to Jim's house. And then live there. what happens when there's wind? <laughs> or rain. Or rain, and then, like, your drone lands in Grandma Jenkins' house, and then crashing it's like, through, I don't want this couch. Crashing through <laughs> Grandma Betty's window. <laughs> hey, Grandma, wake up. <laughs> That'd be, like, the worst wake-up call ever. Yeah. Sheesh. Uh, an article a couple of weeks ago showed a Crawler King 1973 Ford Bronco with six inches of suspension. That's a lot of suspension. The, the, running seven. The, <laughs> the car is waterproof straight out of the box. Oh, no, <laughs> not, not that, no. <laughs> and it is four-wheel drive and painted with a retro scheme, which looks pretty darn cool. Uh, the body appears to be a soft body, which I am always a huge fan of the soft bodies. I don't really understand hard bodies. It doesn't Explode. make a whole lot of sense to me. Because, like, if you hit a rock, you're going to get a scuff, a big scuff. Uh, you don't get a scuff, you get a crack. You, you'll get a crack. Okay, I apologize. You'll get a giant crack. <laughs> but uh, when I wrote the show notes, the kit isn't available at the time that I wrote them, but they may be now. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure the scale, but I believe it was one-tenth scale. Hmm. And w- <laughs> it looks kind of goofy with the six-inch suspension. What are you running seven-inch suspension on? My actual truck. <laughs> oh, okay. Because uh, this is obviously an RC. The tallest one I got is the Ford. Yeah, that thing's only running three-inch. So this thing has double the suspension <laughs> that's tall a little too tall yeah yeah it kind of looks goofy uh but do you know of any like retro vintage bodies out there for like the cars that we've got you can get all kinds of bodies you can get an old pontiac and put a pontiac body on it if you wanted to it does hobby town sell those or would you have to go online to like ebay or something they do and they don't a lot of times you'll go in there and they won't know what you're talking about or they do <laughs> what are you talking they about old they school don't carry them. <laughs> i can't even spell old school yeah <laughs> rcdriver.com had a post uh about locating body uh sorry locating post holes on a painted body i didn't write a bunch about it i just put a link in there so i don't remember what it's about but i guess finding your post holes when you're painting is sometimes a problem you're supposed to so, do the holes before you paint it Okay, yeah, that makes more sense, because <laughs> then you're not, like, putting a giant design yeah. over it, and then it looks kind of goofy. So, anyway, uh, and, oh, I said anyway. No. <laughs> That's, like, my, oh, you can break that thing in half. <laughs> yeah. So, Nick and I, a while ago, there was a video also online, uh, when we were driving our car at the park. Uh, I think we were just driving the... Oh, no, you had the Wraith, and then it died. But we were driving the Honcho up and down the slide at the park. And on the way home, I asked you, could you make an RC car into a lawnmower? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what this man did. And the post was titled, How to Cut the Lawn When It's 98 Degrees. And it's difficult to see what's going on in the picture, uh, just because it's like kind of far away and through a window but my best guess is that somehow this guy made his lawnmower radio controlled i don't know how you would go about doing that but you could make a tractor and make like the tractor (laughs) mower blades for the rear of it i guess that would work but i mean on mythbusters they radio control the heck out of everything yeah big cars and stuff yeah it It just depends on how good you are even big rigs they were doing like a lot of the time so yeah (laughs) it's definitely possible just who has the time and the money to do it? Apparently this guy. <laughs> uh, again, you can see the picture over at hillbillysandcamocaps.wordpress.com. And eventually we'll be getting some nice hosting for the website, so then you can download from iTunes and do all that cool stuff. So when you're driving to school, to work, to grandma's house, and to deliver that couch, uh, maybe you can just give us a listen. And I'm sure that many people out there would like this next story. Nick, I've told you this one uh, before. Uh, A man's wife purchased a fairly new slash for only $3. And no, I did not miss a zero and mean $30, but it was only $3. And as the story has it, a tenant was evicted from his rental home and left all of his stuff behind. 
And then the landlord stepped forth and was selling everything in the house because that's what happens when you don't pay your rent. And the landlord must have thought it was just like a cheapo Walmart RC car for like kids or something. Mm -hmm. And he just sold it for $3 because it wasn't his anyway. You know, it's the guy's stuff. So he was just like, get rid of it. Um, Unfortunately, the tenant didn't take too good of care of his car. Well, that was weird. He didn't take much care of his car. And there was a significant amount of rust, dirt, and the battery was, like, strewn apart. The wires were, like, that thing could catch fire in seconds. <laughs> Probably would. Uh, a few screws were bent out of whack, but once uh, the replacement parts were put back together, the car ran pretty much perfectly, including the motor and servo. So those with those of you with uh, significant others, let this be a message to... <laughs> let your wife or whoever it is know be like the best brands out there and just tell them what you like and then if they go around to a garage sale and see something awesome tell them to get it <laughs> have you had any weird stories about garage sales like that nope <laughs> what's, the, what's the weirdest thing that you've seen at a garage sale <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, that would have to keep it PG. <laughs> we're we're going to have to go PG on that one. <laughs> I ain't seen nothing like that. <laughs> no, nothing freaky like a dead lady or something? No. Nope. Well. Oh, 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 okay. And that's where we end the story because it's not PG. <laughs> um, uh, another article not too long ago was titled, So, Traxxas is insanely overpriced here in Japan. It's pretty self-explanatory, but some of the ridiculous prices included... Uh, Traxxas body clips for 3,700 yen, yen, which is about 35 US dollars. So it's just body clips for three, uh, sorry, 35 US dollars. That's ridiculous. A $124 six piece screw set, $23 balloons. <laughs> Why would you need balloons? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know, you keep a stock of them. I keep a stock of them because they're fun to blow up and stuff, but I, why would you need them on a Traxxas website? I I don't understand. I don't know either. Uh, a $1,500 e-revo, which I don't know how much the e-revo is, but it's definitely not $1,500. And a $155 3S LiPo. So, I couldn't imagine how much their bodies cost, because bodies are expensive enough, and then... I don't know. Go I don't know where you're going to drive that stuff and <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, Japan's really densely populated, so... It'd have be fun hard with to, that. Yeah, <laughs> good luck. You're going to have to drive through people's legs and go, like, out and around people. <laughs> yeah. a, so a company named Parma... There's a dang thing on the screen. A company named Parma has got a bunch of options for styling out your short course truck. And you can choose from a dune buggy, a 50s look, a panel truck, or a vintage muscle car. The bodies only run about $40 and are meant for one-tenth scale kits. Uh, The slash body that they're selling looks pretty awesome, but a little bit cartoony, but still awesome. (laughs) Uh, So what exactly is a short course truck? They're like Baja trucks, but they race on a course. And not do they don't do the like one thousand miles and something like that. They just do like stadiums. Okay. And so do they usually race on like dirt or what? Oh yeah. Okay. So what? Apparently the slash is a short course truck. Then right. Mm-hmm. What else is that you have? Do you have anything else? Just the slashes. How about your minor. nitro thing that you had or you have? I don't know if you. Still have it. That's <laughs> just a nitro thing. I don't even know what to classify that thing as. All right. <laughs> a company named Viterra has added a ready to run Corvette Z51 to their V100S lineup. The car is pretty good looking with four wheel drive CV shafts, a brushed 540 power. I think I'm missing a word there. And oh man, the screen uh, <laughs> and a spectrum radio gear. Uh, the vehicle is cooking in the sample videos and looks pretty awesome. The car comes in at a not so bad price at ready to run at two hundred eighty nine ninety nine, and that's American uh, U S dollars. And I would honestly be scared to drive this vehicle because it looks so pretty. Like the body is like really lustrous, like shiny, and mm-hmm. looks so perfect. I'd be terrified to drive it. And I think 
I don't know if it was a hard body or soft body, but that'd be, be soft body. Yeah, but that'd still be terrifying to do much of anything with. Uh, do you have any thoughts about this one? Not much. All right, so let's go on to gear of the week. We got some cool stuff for gear of the week. I'm just going to get it right here. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> I, got, I got it under a snuggie. Hold on. Don't, don't mind me. <laughs> No, you're just bashing your head on it. Alright, so gear of the week, we've got this sweet helicopter. <laughs> well, now that I cut my leg open, um, we've got, oh, I've got a helicopter that I got for my birthday, and uh, you can imagine I suck at flying. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, get on the um, table. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this Cut my knee off. <laughs> this my parents got uh, for me on my birthday. Oh, sorry, on my birthday uh, from like Batteries Plus, and uh, it's like a. It's mainly intended for indoors. I tried it outside. That's not gonna work too well. I tried it outside, and uh, the range isn't very good. So it's meant for indoor flying and that kind of stuff. And you can see me failing right now. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, we're doing good. We're good. Oh, 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 oh. You hit the flame. Again. And it is actually kind of durable. I've wrecked it around a bunch. Yeah, uh, looks like it. You can feel. I'm not touching anything. Don't worry. But it's it's pretty good just for like the cheapo little thing that it is. And I, I, this show, you know, it, some police lights on there. It's got some sweet lights. <laughs> it charges uh, by USB. So if you got a computer. Oh. Or, if you don't have a computer, then you can just stick one of those, like, wall adapters like on this. Like the iPhones and stuff on it. Yeah, so you can just, like, stick that into your computer, do whatever. The charge time is pretty slow, and then the runtime isn't very good either. So, I mean, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> with that, we'll probably wrap up the show. So that's the end of the show. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Again, we'll be bringing you episodes each month uh, throughout the new year, hopefully. Maybe not rerun it. And <laughs> not do a rerun on accident. And uh, hopefully not break my ceiling fan. <laughs> that was bad. Uh, articles this week are from... What, that? what happened? What did I, I do? I think it's been beat up pretty bad. I don't think it matters. It's a little bent there. It's okay. Stay. <laughs> Articles this week are... Whoa, that was weird. Articles this week are from Reddit.com, HPI Racing, File Hippo, Jamon, or Guillaume, I don't know, and YouTube.com. And with that, I am Mix. I am Nick. And we will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.